Here we stand. Behold our bounty. Let it be written that D-News have the family duty honor to be the light in the darkness. Guys, the dire wolf is real and winter is coming. May the light of the seven shine upon you. I'm Trace, and thanks for tuning in to D-News. If you're not familiar, in Game of Thrones, the family symbol of many of the main characters who died so far in the series, spoiler, is a dire wolf, a massive intelligent species of wolf common in the wildlands north of the wall. But, and this is just frickin' amazing, the dire wolf isn't entirely fictional. As late as 12,000 years ago, right here in the good old Americas, there were dire wolves, and they might be coming back. Okay, so, the dire wolf and the dire wolf are two different things. The one word dire wolf is fictional, and the two word dire wolf, or Canis direus, was very real. In the first season of the TV show, dire wolf pups are played by northern Inuit dogs, which are bred to look like wolves. In the later seasons, the wolves were actually played by actual wolves because HBO does not do half measures. This is about the best we can do today because actual dire wolves are extinct. The real life Canis direus lived between 300,000 and 12,000 years ago, which, as it happens, was the last time perpetual winter happened for real. Dire wolves evolved toward the end of the Pleistocene epoch, the last great ice age, when huge glaciers covered up to 30% of the Earth's surface. At their peak, the ice sheets extended as far south as what is now Kentucky and were almost four kilometers thick. This was the age of megafauna, like mammoths and giant condors and giant beavers and giant sloths. Actually, pretty much everything seemed to have the word giant in its name. For warm-blooded animals, though, being larger meant retaining heat better, which was an advantage during an ice age. So, combine giant prey with colder conditions and you get a red wedding made in heaven for bigger predators like dire wolves. Dire wolves weren't quite as huge as George Valermogulis Martin makes them out to be in the book and the show. An average dire wolf was about 80 centimeters tall, the same height as a modern gray wolf, but they were 25% heavier, weighing up to 67 kilograms. Their skulls were broader and they had a large crest down the midline that was a good anchor point for their strong jaw muscles. Because of that, their bite is estimated to be 29% stronger than a gray wolf's, which already has the largest bite pressure of any living canid. Dire wolves and gray wolves coexisted for about 100,000 years, but the end of the Pleistocene was marked with a period of extinction that wiped out three quarters of the large Ice Age animals. No one's really sure why. It may have been due to climate change or humans getting really good at hunting or both, but suddenly all those giant animals just died out. The dire wolves went the way of the woolly mammoth and the saber-toothed cat and the Starks. While their smaller, quicker, bigger-brained cousins, the gray wolves, survived. So you can't have a dire wolf as a pet because their genetic lineage hit a dead end and most of what we know about them comes from the skeletons we found in the La Brea Tar Pits where there are just oodles of dire poodles. But one dog breeder is aiming to revive them, or at least the fantasy version of them. The dire wolf project has been breeding larger, long-lived dire wolf alike since 1988. After spending 20 years never resting and breeding Alaskan Malamutes, German Shepherds, Great Pyrenees, Anatolian Shepherds, and English Mastiffs together, they created what they called the American Alsatian, a 59 kilogram shaggy dog. Still though, eight kilos lighter than a true Canis diarus, but growing strong. Dogs have been with humanity way longer than we thought, but who actually domesticated them? Did we do it? Or did dogs domesticate themselves? Check out DNews Plus for a whole series on the domestication of animals, big and small, right here. Today, if you look at a dog and you look at a wolf, they don't just look different on the outside. They have different skeletal structures. There's DNA differences. But there are links between, say, Siberian Huskies and the Siberian Wolf. So would owning a dire wolf be worth being a member of House Stark, knowing what you know now? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get more DNews and Valar Mugulis, everybody.